Now, yesterday we talked a little bit about, <clears throat> excuse me, yesterday we talked a little bit about Afghanistan and what's going on in Afghanistan. And I know for the better part of several decades, many Americans have been misled about what was going on, what were American troops doing in these countries. And when you understand that it's just a cultural war that was going on, America, in essence, was trying to push democracy, not, not a constitutional republic. They were pushing the woke democracy that we have here in America with the very liberal ideologies that we now experience here, where, you know, with the whole thing with minorities, you know, we have to have certain representations of, of the women and the trans and, the, and gay people, etc. And when you look at Islamic culture, is, is, Islamic culture is very much like um, old school, you know, the Old Testament. When you read the Old Testament, you, you read of men like King David, they didn't tolerate what many Christians now tolerate in our time. If, if we could bring those men who lived during the times of Israel and we were to transport them to our time right now, they would look exactly like the Taliban. They would have the same mindset. And if they saw you committing acts of fornication and adultery, they would put you to death. They would stone you to death if they found women that were committing adultery, prostitution, etc. Even right up into Jesus' time, where they brought in front of Jesus a, a prostitute and they said, We're gonna stone her to death, stone her to death, and then you know, Jesus made the exclamation, uh, you know, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Not that Jesus was against the Mosaic law, but he used it as a lesson that the men needed to learn to be more tolerable in terms of helping these people and not necessarily always be looking to execute judgment against these people. Their, their, their viewpoint had been obscured. It wasn't that he was up against the stoning of prostitutes or that he would wanted to put to death those who committed adultery. In fact, if you read... The book of revelations and it's very very clear you know the apostle paul also spoke of those very same things that god will judge uh, you know fornicators and adulterers oh well, in what sense meaning he will put you to death and so if you it's it, you know the the woke sort of christians you know that you see now in america that are like oh my god i can't believe what's going on over there those, those poor women living in such a harsh reality how could they right like, like what is it that what is that chick how dare you whatever the hell her name is, Greta. Because what those individuals <clears throat> lived was patriarchy. The men were in charge and the women were subservient. Now in our woke culture, that isn't the case. We see what happens with men in the courts. We see women being pushed into pseudo welfare jobs, women being manipulated by the state primarily for the purpose of voting and of course spending because women women who are single and we see a lot of single women nowadays and it will continue in that direction for the foreseeable future and it's because politicians need women to vote they need the female vote and so they need these women to be single they can't be attached to a man like i showed in another video overwhelmingly when women are married and when they're attached to a man excuse me and have a family they vote conservative why because they want the resources that their husband goes out and earns, they want those resources used for their family. They don't want those resources extracted from their husband and their families and given to single mothers. And so when you look back into history, and, I, and this is just the mind games that have been played by the American government to imagine that these men who were in essence fighting for their freedom, fighting for their culture, fighting for their religion, that these people are bad people. They were sitting, you know, they're bad people. They're, they're terrorists. They want our way. They're insurgents, you know, whatever sort of label. And we will read this article and you will see the numerous labels that are used against these individuals. This is one of the most urgent questions raised by the return of the Taliban to the power in Afghanistan is whether the radical Islamist group will again impose draconian restrictions on women and girls. Great attention is paid to the statement by a spokesman on August 16th that the Taliban would 
respect women's rights within the framework of Sharia and the Islamic law, what would that mean? It means patriarchy. It means patriarchy, that these women would go back to being housewives and caretakers, and sure, they might have some sort of job within the country, but overwhelmingly, their responsibilities will go back to being nurturers of children and bearing children. Very, pretty much what we don't have in the West. Instead, westernized women betrayed their men in a mind war against, from between the governments and big businesses against their local men, and in essence, betrayed them and sided with the government for pseudo welfare and what was referred to as you know the womanist movement which we realize now is just the foot that was in the door for communism and that's what we see right now we see the social programs are out of hand and as a result of overwhelming amounts of social programs we are now on the cusps of communism within our own country moving forward it says it's a set of precepts rather than a code of law available for application. It's the Islamic way, it's the, it's the way, it's patriarchy. When you look at the Mosaic law, the Mosaic law didn't have all these different things for women to do. What do you think women did in biblical times? Do you think women were out there working all these jobs? No, they tended to their families. Now they might've had a, a business within the home, maybe they, created items maybe they created textiles maybe they sold fruit but overwhelmingly it was for the purpose of the home they didn't work for another man some might in some smaller businesses but not in these big businesses and stayed single and and rode the carousel for 15 20 years and then where have all the good men gone no they didn't do that they didn't live that lifestyle and that's why i said it literally if you were to take the old biblical Israelites, and you were to transpose them from their time into our time, and they saw what modern Christians did. If the Apostle Paul was alive right now, he would equally call for the death penalty for many of these supposed Christians who live lives of fornication and adultery. It just wouldn't happen. But because people have become so laxed spiritually, they have been lulled to sleep. In the system of things that they imagine that this lifestyle completely foreign what do you mean we live a moral code in which the men are responsible for women and children that is unheard of that is misogyny and the article points it out that way where it goes on to state it says it's composed of the principles of islam laid out mainly in the quran and in the record of the prophet muhammad's life Sharia is subject to the interpretations of jurists. Shoot, so is the Constitution, right? The second, what is it? The Second Amendment, the right to bear arms will not be infringed. And then you have constitutional law. Oh, did they really mean that? No, they merely meant that it was for hunting deer, not for protecting you against the government. It's like, please, man, stop. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It says the body of jurisprudence produced by Muslim scholars. Since Muhammad's time is known as the Fiq, forgive my mispronunciation, meaning understanding. And it is often spoken of interchangeably with Sharia. And it basically goes back to old school patriarchy, what we had in biblical times, where the men were responsible for the family. And those who committed adultery, those who committed treason, what did they do? They beheaded you. In our time, we have corrupt politicians. What happens to them? Absolutely nothing. You have individuals pushing for you have individuals pushing for critical race theory in your schools. You have the LGBT community wanting to read books to your kids, and this should be completely okay. Do you think that biblical men would have tolerated that? Hells no. They would have killed them all. In fact, if you read the account when Israel came out of Egypt and they were living in the wilderness, there was a young man who brought a Philistine woman into his tent. He was actually a well-to-do male. He was well-known. And he took a foreign woman and tried to commit fornication in his tent in front of all of them. And I believe it was Phineas 
who grabbed a spear and he said, I will not tolerate this. And he speared them both in the tent. This is what went on even back then, but the men did not tolerate such acts. In our time, we see the fulfillment of why God had said you should not tolerate these acts within your nation. Look how far away as a nation that claims to be Christian, how far they have strayed. And they are reaping the benefit. They are reaping the results of straying away. We're going to look at Australia. Now in Australia, Australia is a giant cluster. And the Australian people are going to be begging for the Taliban to come set them free. The state of emergency powers, and this is as of August from 2020, these powers are still in effect right now. Just so that you can read what is going on in Australia and what is going and what these people have been enduring. And it says here, it says the state's health minister, Brad Hazard, can make any direction he needs to reduce or remove the risk of the disease in our area. It says to segregate or isolate people or to block access to any part of the NSW. It says other authorized officers can do things such as enter and expect any premises relevant to public health, take samples, photos or videos, or inspect documents that might relate to the disease, compel anyone to answer questions related to public health. Right? We have ways of making you speak. It goes on to say in the different parts of Australia, it says the author authorized officers can break into any land building, structure, or vehicle using whatever force necessary. Direct or prohibit the movement of people, animals, or vehicles. Put people in quarantine. Order people to undergo medical exams, tests, treatment. Compel people to give information. Police in uniform don't have to show their credentials before exercising these powers. Non-uniform officers need a certificate of authority but only have to show it if requested. What about in the North? It says they can remove someone from somewhere. So vague. Prevent someone from entering a place. Search for and seize anything related to public health. Examine and remove documents related to the health emergencies. And this is what's going on in places like Australia, who have democracy to thank for. These people are going to be begging somebody to come set them free. Australia started as a penal colony, and it looks like they're going full circle.